So we went two and one in baseball yesterday. Not quite a sweep, but we're going to have some more MLB winners for you here today. But let's not bury the lead, Mark Zeno, because the NFL is back. Hall of Fame game, Bears and Texans. Definite betting interest in this one. The spread has jumped the fence. Houston now minus one and a half. Total is down to 31. Please enlighten us with your infinite wisdom on what you think of these uh, this various line movement. And uh, and let's get the discussion going. Great to have the NFL back, man. Thank God, because I can't. I, I'd rather lose a football game than lose another baseball game. So I, I have just about had it uh, with betting on baseball. So uh, let's let's turn our attention to the NFL and football, thankfully, being back. Now, look, you're not going to get any starters in this game of note, right? Uh, you're going to get no C.J. Nope. Stroud. You're going to get no Caleb Williams. So you're playing all second teamers. There's two ways to look at this, right? You could look at it and go, it's all second teamers. Uh, there's going to be a downgraded level of play. Therefore, that would lead to less scoring, less points, less everything, because none of these starters are playing. However, the flip side of that is you're playing a bunch of second teamers, third teamers, and guys who are hoping to make the NFL roster. So you're absolutely going to get every, their best effort on every single play, every single time, and all of them want to make a play that stands out on tape, that stands out to coaches that people notice and are talking about in the press and the media and everything else because that helps you make the team, right? So those players could cause the unexpected to happen, right? The guy who sacks strips and then instead of falling on the ball for the fumble, decides to pick it up and run into the end zone for a touchdown because guess what? It's a preseason game, and you may never pick up an NFL ball in a game and run it in for a touchdown again. That obviously could change the outcome of things. So that's sort of the variance you're dealing with here, BP. Generally, though, uh, I feel like, you know, being this the Hall of Fame game, there's still some rust and everything else. Obviously, it's the first time in pads. I would lean towards a lower scoring affair here on, on all accounts is the way I look at it. Yes, and we will have a best bet coming up on the total. Stay tuned for that. As far as the spread goes... Mark, I got to say, I don't know if I agree with the line. Just what? Because the Bears aren't playing their starters? I mean, like you said, it's not like we're going to be seeing C.J. Stroud. It's not like we're going to be seeing any of the Texans uh, star players here. You look at who's going to be a quarterback. Bajan started games in the regular season last year for Chicago. Rippins started regular season games before in his career. And then keep an eye on Reed, uh, the guy from what the kid from Western Kentucky, Threw for a lot of yards in college. He's going to be in there at the end. You talk about a guy trying to maybe be hero at the end. Maybe it's Reed. I don't know. But stay tuned for that best bet on the total. But Mark Zeno, much to your chagrin, we are going to talk Major League Baseball today. We have a daily double play to get through. And I love the game you're going to talk about. It's a very short card in Major League Baseball today, but I actually really like the card quite a bit. And I love the game you've picked up because if people rewind a couple months on the show – we were all over a game between the Cubs and the Mets. It is the only time all season that Shota Imanaga, the Cubs rookie sensation, has faced the same opponent twice. What happened? He got shelled for 10 runs and three innings. 19 career starts for Imanaga, 18 different opponents. Guess what? He's facing the Cardinals for a second time this season on Thursday. And what say you? Well, why don't you just tell them? Tell me what you want me to tell everybody because you just told everybody. <laughs> I mean, oh, I, I was. I, I got excited. I got excited. You know, okay. that, was it. that was it. I mean, look, he faced the Mets back on May first in New York. Seven innings, three hits, no runs, seven strikeouts, and then he hosts the Mets at home. Three innings, eleven hits, ten runs, three strikeouts. Gave up three bombs in the game. So the last time he faced the Cardinals back on June fifteenth, we have seven innings, four hits, one run, six Ks. Facing the Cardinals again. Let's continue the trend here. I mean, look, Imanaga has only given up more than three runs in just two starts this year. The aforementioned one against, I'm sorry, three starts. The aforementioned one against the Mets, a game against the White Sox, and a game at Milwaukee. So uh, you don't see it often. And oh, by the way, guys, just with this whole thing, just look at the number, look at the line. This is a basically a pick and price here today um, mm. in this game. And that should be alarming given the fact that Imanaga has been that dominant. Um, that you're basically getting even money on both sides, you know, minus 115, minus 105, a uh, little, little shaded to the to to the Cubs in certain spots. Uh, yeah, that should tell you all you need to know that the Cardinals are in a very good position here to, to probably steal this one. Smash that like button if you agree with Zeno on the cards. 
Let us know what you think about Imanaga. Do you think he's going to struggle now? Uh, obviously, the you know his innings load, his workload mark for the year is way up. So uh, let us know what you think of that little handicapping theory. We've got a little more situational handicapping for my half of the double play. I'm taking the Detroit Tigers plus one and a half against Kansas City. Now, yes, the Royals are coming into the Motor City on a three-game win streak. But who did they just sweep, Mark? The White Sox. Uh, what are the White, Sox? the White Sox? Very bad. Yes. Very bad. Yes. What well, 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 the White Sox are? Ass. 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 Exactly. They are ass. They've lost 17 straight games. That is the definition of ass. But before yesterday's 10-3 win, remember the Royals needed to come from behind to win the first two games of that series against the Sox. We remember that because a couple days ago on the program, we gave out the White Sox plus one and a half. That was a best bet winner. I'm taking the one and a half against KC again here. Love the setup. Detroit had Wednesday off, a rare midweek off day for a team. That series with the Guardians was just two games. So Kansas City traveling, Detroit, no travel, off day. Seth Lugo is a guy, he's starting for Kansas City, and he's a guy, Mark, that I think is a little overrated. His expected ERA sits more than a full run higher than his actual ERA. He's given up five or more runs in two of his last three starts. We also can't forget KC on the road. Their bat's not as prolific. I know they beat up on the White Sox bullpen, but you don't get to face the White Sox bullpen every day, okay? Kansas City, 27th on the road in WRC+, 24th in batting average. Their strikeout rate goes way up away from Kauffman Stadium. Montero, he scares me a little, but we got the one and a half in our back pocket. Detroit, plus one and a half, is my half of the double play to go along with Mark and the Cardinals. Comment down below with your favorite MLB selections for Thursday. Again, our best bet is coming up in just a little bit, and it is on the NFL Hall of Fame game. But first, what a deal to start August, Mark. No, I am not talking about this torts book that I have here. Remember, you look, Mark Zeno learned yesterday on first pitch that I went to law school and dropped I, out very quickly. Uh, th this torts book I, was a complete I, waste of money. But I got to tell you, I mean, there, there, there were, <laughs> if there were odds on me thinking you went to law school, it would have been the same as, as, uh, you know, Dak Prescott, <laughs> I'm sorry, uh, uh, Russell Wilson winning the MVP. Like it just did complete long shot. Never would have saw it coming. Totally. Yeah, and yeah, the morning yeah. wager audience just learned this, that you went to law school. Yes, because you learn something new every day. You're very articulate, but you're just not that smart. Now, that was a pot shot, and I don't appreciate that, okay? I don't appreciate that one bit. I'm a very smart. I, would you like me to bring out my transcripts for tomorrow? <laughs> Nonetheless, you know what would be very smart? Is to What's get down on this great deal we've got going on at Wager Talk. Buy Look two that. months, get August free. What a deal. So if you buy the two months, this is what you're going to get. You're going to get the NFL preseason, the first two months of the regular season in both college and NFL, the rest of the MLB season. From me, you get some soccer. You get anything else, your favorite handicapper releases. Buy two months. Get August free. Head on over to either of our pages, wt.buzz slash bp, wt.buzz slash mz, to take advantage now. As you see, that deal will run through. August 11th. So enough about my failed law school career. Let's get to today's show. Best bet, Mark. It is what the people have been waiting for. They want to place that first NFL wager of the season. The under has been historically profitable in the Hall of Fame game. Not the last two years. I actually had the over in the Browns-Jets last year. Cashed a 4% winner there. But you and I are not going to overthink it. We think it's going to be a pretty boring game with very few points scored. Yeah, again, um, I would tell you one, defenses are always ahead of offenses at this point in the in the preseason, right? Um, you know, you can you can they don't need as much time or as much rhythm and as much sync as the offense does. So you expect the offenses to be a little bit rusty, the defenses to shine out. Um, you know, again, you're dealing with the defensive coach and D'Amico Ryans. Matt Eberflus isn't a very good coach either way, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, <laughs> and you're getting a lot on, you know, not non starter players here. I just you know, again, I, I think both of these teams are on the rise, um, you know, when you talk about the regular season. But the biggest thing here is that they're going to preach, don't hurt yourself, don't get any injuries. The guys who are going to be going full bore are third and fourth stringers who are fighting for a roster spot. Um, and we just hope that at that point in time, you know, the, the offenses just don't have anything left in the tank here. So uh, I think we look to the under 31 and a half uh, for the full game here and, and take advantage. And uh, let's hope we get that low scoring affair that we're predicting. Yeah, I think there's going to be a lot of running in the first half. 
fewer possessions. That should help us out there. So under 31 and a half, like the man said, is our show best bet. If you already haven't subscribed to the Wager Talk YouTube channel, what exactly are you waiting for? It's very simple. The instructions are right on the screen right there. You click the bell for instant and you get the instant alerts. Morning Wager every Monday through Friday. Mark Zeno and I drop in free plays. And now it's going to include, well, you know, the Hall of Fame. You know, the preseason proper doesn't start. Uh, for a while, but it's going to include NFL. Who knows? I might even sneak a soccer play. That domestic season's right around Ooh. the corner, Zeno. So be on the lookout for that. I think we need a jingle. Let's cue that up because it is time to go home <laughs> here on the program. Let's open this book. Look, there's I highlighted. There's highlight in this book. I did. I, I did read it. I did open it. Yeah. What can you tell me about you... Atkinson versus Bernard Incorporated? I can't tell you a damn thing. Listen, you know what I can tell you? Atkinson was probably minus three. He didn't cover the number. <laughs> there you go. Me. All right, everybody. Peace. Marks, you know, cash is tickets. Always got my back.